I know the feeling, though. I know what it's like. I've sat there. I've sat in services all my life when I was a kid until I was 23 years old. I know what it's like to have your hair stand up on top of your head. I know what it's like to have a goose egg in your throat to the point where you couldn't even swallow it. And you couldn't wait till the service was over and get me out of here. I wanted to get gone, and I'd feel relieved as soon as that last prayer was prayed. Matter of fact, I've even been in services right here before while I was preaching and feel conviction so strong on whoever it was. And then when that last prayer was prayed to close the service, it was as though you could feel the conviction leave. And it was a sigh as some walked out the door, not knowing that that sigh was not a relief, but that sigh was probably going to be the last word you ever say before you die and go to hell. You know what? I'd rather feel the convicting power of the Holy Ghost than feel the flames of a never-burning fire on my soul. That's right. You see, there's only one way to heaven. There's not many ways to heaven. There's only one. All roads don't end up in glory. There's only one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus. Faith in the finished work of Christ at Calvary. That's the only way. When you feel that tug and that pull and that draw, then you know what it is. You've felt it before. You'll do anything in the world to try to get your mind off what's really happening. Oh, yeah. You'll try to, and that's why I try to keep people, y'all be quiet, don't play with babies during church. Because there might be somebody under conviction and the devil will use that young to get their mind off what's going on. That's why I say when you come to church, wear dressable clothes where you're not revealing yourself. So people won't be staring at your legs or your hind end or your chest. Amen. The devil will use anything more he can. Why? These people are going to die and go to hell. Sitting in the church pew. Amen. He'll use anything he can to do it. My question is this today. Where are you going to spend eternity at? Think about it. Where are you going to go? Where are you going to spend eternity in? If you're saying heaven, then in your mind answer this question. Why? Why are you going to heaven? Answer that. In your mind, make sure. Do you have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus? Here's what I want to do. I want, I want Miss Sue to play something. We're not going to have him preach. Well, we're all, God's already preaching. Amen. Amen. And what I want to do, I want to give this opportunity. I want us all to stand here.
See, really, what he's done. The Bible is nothing more than a love letter to man. And when I was a kid in elementary school, they didn't have smartphones and Facebook and social media and Instagram and all that. We had it on a piece of paper. I'd take a little piece of paper. And I think I sent one to my wife in the sixth grade. And I asked her to go with me, I think, to the athletic banquet at Farmer School. If I remember correctly, all I put down on that piece of paper was, will you go with me? A block over here said yes, and a block over here said no. And if they put a check in the block that said no, that was bad. And you was never the one that took it to the person. I didn't think her. You'd have your friend say, hey, somebody want me to give you this. And then they'd, you had a middleman. You know what I mean? Kind of like the Holy Ghost is the middleman. Y'all get where I'm going with this in a minute. So what God has done, His Bible, is a great big love letter. That's all it is. And he's put, he's got this at it. This is what the Bible is saying in a whole. He's saying, will you go with me? And there's a block over here that says yes. And then there's a block over here that says no. And there's a mediator between the two, just like you had in middle school, except this mediator is the Holy Ghost. And he brings that letter. Some point in time in your life, and he hands it to you. Delivery. I have a certified letter from the sovereign God of the universe. Yes. Delivered to your address on this day in December 2014. Yeah. Certified from heaven. First class air mail. Priority shipping. To the address of 4836 Robin Circle, Asheboro, North Carolina, 27205. The residence of God's house, Bethel Baptist Church. And so what the Holy Ghost is doing, he comes in and he's giving you certified mail. Straight from heaven. And if you're here today and you're lost, he said, will you go with me? He's waiting on you to say yes or no. Amen. Then what you're doing when you sign that, and today might be the only time you ever get a letter, you may never get another letter. And you give it back to the Holy Ghost, he's going to take it back to God today. And your reaction to the letter that you're getting right now in the mail via heaven, first class, priority, our mail, could determine where you spend eternity in. Here's what's so wonderful about it. He wants you, whether you want him or not. So I want to ask you this today before we go here in a moment. If you're saved, how's your relationship with it? If you're lost, this is your opportunity to open the door. Get your higher mail. Read it. Give me my answer, yes or no. While Miss Sue plays, you want to come pray, come get around the altar. If you're lost, today's your day. I bid you to come. Why put it off? Why wait? Why wait any longer? Why drag around and seal your fate? Whatever your need is today, while Miss Sue plays something, you come. Let's do this for God. We're going home here in just a moment. Maybe you know somebody that's here today and they're lost. Won't you come pray for them?
Won't you come pray? They might not walk the aisle for Jesus, but what about if they saw you walk the aisle and pray for them? You don't have to tell them what you're doing. Wonder if you would go pray for somebody here today. You're not wondering or wondering where they're going to spend eternity at. To be in a service like this and to tell God no, no. What about it, friend? Others are coming. What about you? You want to pray for anybody? Anybody on your heart you want to pray for? Maybe you're lost today and you're not ashamed. You're tired of it going your way. You say, I'm done. Right now is my day. Today is the day. I'm opening the door. I've heard him knock before and he may never knock again on my door. But today, I'm doing business with God, and I'm going to read the mail, the letter he sent to me, and I'm going to put a check in that yes block. What about it, friend? Others are coming. What about it, friend? Are you sure? Are you prepared to meet God? Where are you going to spend eternity at? I'd hate to think that I was going to die and go to hell. You die and go to hell after being in a service like this this morning. You'll stay there for eternity. And if God gave you an opportunity today, you'll never be able to get this service off of your mind. You'll be thinking over and over and over again, why didn't I trust Jesus then? Why I had a chance? Why I had an opportunity? While God was knocking on my door, why didn't I do something then?